Hello, potential coders. Welcome back to the Arduino Basics tutorial series. Today we're doing lesson number five, where we're gonna be learning how to take input from a potentiometer. Really quickly, what is a potentiometer? A potentiometer, which often looks like this, but can come in other forms as well, essentially consists of a knob, one pin for voltage, one pin for ground, and one pin often referred to as the wiper, which is the pin that connects to the potentiometer. Inside is essentially a variable resistor. We've already talked briefly about resistors and how we can use them to resist voltage coming through a circuit. This is the same thing. The only difference is we can adjust it on the fly by turning the knob. Think about a dimmer switch that you might have in a house. By turning it, we adjust the voltage in the circuit, which allows us to control various things, such as the brightness of an LED, or to actually read a numerical value as to how much is flowing through. In this lesson, what we're gonna do is first learn how to wire the potentiometer, and then learn how to use a serial monitor just to read the input that we get from it. We're gonna start with a blank wiring diagram with our Arduino wired up to the breadboard ground, and voltage channel. First thing we're gonna do is bring in our three pin potentiometer. We're gonna wire it up to our breadboard. The middle pin is the pin that's gonna to connect to our Arduino. For that pin, we're gonna connect it to A0 on our Arduino board. This is one of the special analog inputs that our Arduino board already has preset up. So there we have our middle pin wired in to A0 on our Arduino board. Next, we're gonna take the left-hand terminal of the potentiometer and we're gonna wire it to the ground row on our breadboard and the right-hand terminal and wire it to the voltage. Now, you could reverse the polarity of these by putting the ground on the right and the voltage on the left. All that would mean is it would reverse the way in which you turn the potentiometer in order to increase or decrease the voltage. So that's it for our wiring diagram. Pretty simple this time around. Let's hop over to the code and have a look at what we need to do there. So here we are in our code interface. All I've done is create a new sketch, so we're gonna start by renaming it. For lesson number five, we're gonna be reading in the value of a potentiometer. Let's go ahead and look at what we're gonna need in our code. There's actually not that much that we need. Let's declare a couple of variables to start things off. So you'll see that I created an integer called ppin, which I'm gonna use from a potentiometer pin of A0 with a capital A. And then I have another int for p value, which is gonna be the potentiometer value, and I haven't bothered to initialize that to a number yet. In our setup function, we're gonna have just a couple of things to set things up. So in our setup function, we're gonna set the pin mode for our potentiometer pin and set it as an input pin. So this points to A0, which sets that as an input pin. Here, we're gonna begin our serial monitor as we do in most times, because we use it for debugging purposes. And I put a print line statement in where I just say the below are the inputted potentiometer value. It's really not needed as our serial monitor is gonna scroll so fast, but really just to get you in good habit. Inside of our loop function, we're gonna start by reading in the value from the potentiometer. We're gonna do this using a new function called analog read. Analog read is something we can use on an input pin to read in a signal that's coming in as an analog wave from that pin. So a digital is just a zero or a one, an off or an on. An analog allows a whole spectrum of values in between. You'll notice that when we take the analog read, we're actually storing it using our p-value variable, which we had declared at the beginning of the file as an integer. Next, we need to print this out to the screen. So we're gonna put a couple of serial print statements to accomplish that task. What I've done is two serial print statements. The first one is just a print, which means it's not gonna jump to a new line after it prints p value colon space. Then I'm gonna do a serial print line with the actual p value. This will fill in with the actual value of the potentiometer and print it after this, and then it'll jump to the new line. So each line should have p value colon space, the actual value, and then it should jump to the next line after that. And that's actually all the code that we're gonna need in here. I'm gonna add in a few comments just for clarity and then we'll try running the code. So there we have it. Let's push this code out to our Arduino and see what happens. Let's open up our serial monitor so we can see. You'll notice mine is giving a reading of zero. As I turn my potentiometer, we're gonna see that value start to increase. Now I'm turning mine clockwise of the way that I have it wired, and you'll see that I can go all the way up to a value of 1,023. So there are 1,024 possible values coming in from the potentiometer, zero, all the way up to 1,023. Great job with lesson number five. For the extension, we're just gonna learn how to do a little bit of math inside of Arduino. So you'll see that I have my potentiometer on and my output is a little different. It's printing the p-value, but it's also printing this converted value. And what I want you to do is using math, I want you to allow the potentiometer to also print to the serial a range from zero, four, where it splits up those 1,024 values into only five. Zero, one, two, three, and four. And this gives us a little bit more control over this dimmer, depending on what we want it to control. Good luck. 
Great job with the extension. And now we're gonna have a look at the challenge. This, we're gonna bring back some skills you used in previous lessons, like wiring up an LED. What I want you to do is use this potentiometer as a way of controlling the brightness of your LED. You can see it at full brightness and you can dim the LED as you go down. Good luck on the challenge. And thanks for watching lesson number five of the Arduino Basics tutorial series. I look forward to seeing you back in lesson number six. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date as we continue the Arduino Basics tutorials.